The U.S. government's top infectious disease expert is warning the coronavirus outbreak could kill between 100 and 200,000 Americans and that millions in the nation could become infected. What we do know is that we got a serious mm -hmm. problem in New York. We have a serious problem in New Orleans, and we're going to be developing serious problems in other areas. The dire prediction was made as all residents of New York City, America's deadliest hotspot, and others in New York and neighboring states were urged to limit their travel for 14 days. I can't tell you how many people called all night long about the mandatory quarantine comment that the president made. It really panicked people. New virus epicenters have emerged in cities like New Orleans, Detroit, and Chicago. What I wanted to be very clear on is every metro area should assume that they could have an outbreak equivalent to New York and do everything right now to prevent it. If they mitigate now before they start seeing cases in the emergency room and in the hospital, once you see those, the virus has been spreading for days to weeks. Elsewhere, Spain and Italy have demanded more help from Europe in their battle against still surging COVID-19 infections. Here is a sign of the times in Italy. Clusters of coffins arrive every day at this church in the northern region of Lombardy. With funerals forbidden nationwide, this church is still open so that coronavirus victims don't have to stay in a warehouse before burial. It's not a, an easy position to stand on a platform and say we expect a large number of people to die, but we have a pandemic on our hands. Meanwhile, British officials are warning that country may be under some form of lockdown for six months or longer. And on the other side of the world, Australia is limiting public gatherings to two people. As we take the measures that we have been taking and we put them in place and we have the cooperation from the Australian people, then that obviously in turn has an impact on how we're managing the spread of the virus. The world's biggest lockdown is in India, where hundreds of thousands of migrants have now found themselves jobless and homeless. They've begun their long journeys home, some planning to walk hundreds of miles. India's Prime Minister has apologized for the 21-day lockdown, which left the country's large migrant population stranded in big cities. In India's capital, enormous crowds gathered at the border, trying to board buses, trucks and even milk delivery vans, desperate to get back to their villages. So far, more than 1,000 people have tested positive for the coronavirus in India as the economic and human toll deepens. For City News, I'm Karen Siolin.